coming up on Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. David, in the worst times in his life, put his eyes on God, and he told us in the book of Psalms the attitudes that we should have when we're going through difficulty. And when you can't see outside, when you're going through bad times, you can hang on to this right here, and it will predict whether you get out or not. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word conformed literally means a schematic. It means to be identical to something else. And being conformed to the world in our thinking means we just think like everybody else. We think like the world thinks. But transformation here, this word in the Greek is metamorpho, where we get our word metamorphosis, and it means a complete change. A total transformation by the renewing of your mind. Paul is saying the transformation that God is going to do in your life is going to come as your mind is renewed. And he says, and as your mind is renewed, you will be able to know the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Listen, I don't want the good will of God. I don't want the acceptable will of God. I want the perfect will of God. But did you know when your mind is not renewed, you can't understand those things? When your mind begins to be renewed, you can understand the good will of God, and that's good. As your mind continues to be renewed, you can understand the acceptable will of God. But when your mind has been renewed, you can understand the perfect will of God for your life. So it's essential that we don't conform to other people's attitudes or way of thinking, but that we conform to biblical ways of thinking and attitudes so that we can know the perfect will of God and be successful in our lives. So let me, let me talk about uh, attitude here for just a minute. And by the way, uh, I just, the question that I would ask you after reading that scripture is, do you think you have a godly attitude or a worldly attitude? And, and it might run in, you know, it might be segregated. It might be that in certain areas you have a good attitude, but in other areas you don't have such a good attitude. Okay, John Maxwell in his book, The Winning Attitude, here's what he says about attitude, and I love this. He says, attitude is the advanced man of our true selves. Your attitude goes before you. It's your true self. Its roots are inward, but its fruits are outward. It is our best friend and worst enemy. It is more honest and more consistent than our words. It is a thing that draws people to us or repels them, and that's absolutely the truth there. It is never content until it's expressed. And so here are some, here are some truths about our attitudes. These are just some truths that about the attitudes that we have. Number one, we choose our attitudes. They're they're our choice. There was a man named Viktor Frankl who was a prisoner of war in Auschwitz, World War II. You remember that the Jews, uh, the the Nazis killed six million Jews. It's, It's hard to get in your brain how anyone could be so evil as to kill that many people, but they killed six million Jews. And they did it in the gas chambers, mainly in the gas chambers in prisoner of war camps. Auschwitz was one of those camps. And there was a man named Viktor Frankl, and they killed his mother. The Nazis killed his mother. And then his wife and his brother both died in concentration camps. Only his sister survived. Only he and his sister survived of his immediate family. And they put him to forced labor in Auschwitz. And in the midst of his circumstances, which could not have been worse, he said, I choose to suffer with dignity. And regardless of what the Nazis do to me, I will never hate one of them. Regardless of what they do, regardless of whether they killed my mother and my brother and my wife, and they put me to forced labor and exterminated six million of my fellow Jews, I choose to suffer with dignity and I will not hate them. See, They may have defeated him physically, but they never defeated him spiritually. And he got out of the concentration camp. People were dying right and left of just hunger or or just disappointment, just having their hearts broken under the circumstances. He got out and became a motivational speaker and author and died in 1997. He lived a successful life. You choose your attitude. No one chooses it for you. The second truth about attitudes, attitudes are not caused by people or circumstances. 
And there is a deception that says, if my circumstances were different, I would have a better attitude. But that's just simply not true. You can't connect that to reality. We choose our attitudes regardless. Here, let me give you some examples of this. Adam and Eve were perfect people. Adam and Eve died at over 900 years old. And I'm telling you, that is old. If you're here, you're 900. I'm telling you, your face, you're old. You're old as dirt. I'm saying it right to your face. Listen, Adam and Eve had these, they were created perfect, perfect bodies in a perfect paradise. They never had to work, they never did anything. And God lived with them. God walked in the garden with them. It was perfect. And God told them there was one thing on planet earth they couldn't have, and it was a piece of fruit. And they became unthankful and rebellious and took that fruit and ate it. You couldn't have better circumstances than they had, but they had a bad attitude. David, King David is a, a really interesting example of this. In the worst times of his life, he had a fabulous attitude. And in the best times of his life, he had a bad attitude. The Psalms that we read were mostly written by King David in bad times. When Saul was pursuing him, when people were against him, when his life was being endangered. And in those times, he just had this fabulous, godly, humble, faith-filled attitude. But in the best times, Bathsheba, the census. Some of the worst things that David did came in the good times. Again, you can't connect attitudes with people or circumstances. The apostle Paul in Acts chapter 16 went to Philippi to preach the gospel. They took him, they beat him with rods, they threw him in prison, and at midnight he was having a worship service to God and praising God. You, ju you just can't connect it. And some, uh, some of us believe my attitude's not right, but if my circumstances changed, it would be right. You can't, you can't connect that to reality. It's simply not true. It's simply not true. Number three, truth about attitudes. Happiness is a chosen attitude, not a state of being. We choose happiness. It's an attitude. It's a choice that we make. Number four, God rewards good attitudes and he disciplines bad attitudes. It's the truth, and so do good parents. Don't wait till it's become behavior. Discipline it when it's an attitude. Our son Brent came home from school. He was about 10 years old. And he came home from school just absolutely, just unbelievably upset. And, and so as soon as I came in the door, he said, Dad, Dad, I got disciplined today at school for rolling my eyes. <laughs> All I did was roll my eyes. The teacher said something. I, rolled, I didn't do anything. I said, I like that teacher, Brent. I'm on her side. The, the teacher told him something to do, and he went, <laughs> she disciplined him. Don't wait till it be becomes behavior. God disciplines attitudes. Now, now, God always loves us. You, listen, your God is madly in love with you, and nothing can change that. Isn't that good news? It's absolutely true. But like any parent, he, he's able to relate to us based on our attitudes. Let me give you some scriptural examples. James 4, 6, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Is pride an attitude? Well, of course it is. We can choose to be prideful or we can choose to be humble, but it says he gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. He loves the proud. He all, he lo we all deal with pride. He loves us when we're prideful, but prideful puts itself above God. Prideful goes the opposite direction of God, believing it will succeed. Listen, God loves you too much not to fight you when you're going the wrong way. People who pat you on the back on your way to destruction do not love you. And your God loves you too much not to fight for you when you're going the wrong way. Somebody needs to say, praise the Lord. He fights for us, okay? But when we're humble, he's able just to shower his graces on us because he likes that attitude. He's rewarding that right attitude. Humility is not humiliation. It's just seeing ourselves correctly in light of God. It's just a, it's just a humble, gracious kind of an attitude, okay? By the way, verse 10 there says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he'll lift you up. Some, honestly and truly, sometimes all God is waiting on is an attitude change in our lives to, to bless us and to give us what we're looking for. He loves us, but he does deal with our attitudes. It's just the truth. It's part of his growing us up. I love this scripture. This is Hebrews 12, beginning with verse 7. Listen, this is God, talking about God as our Father and how he disciplines. Hebrews 12. If you endure chastening, discipline, God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which we have all become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we had human fathers who corrected us, 
we paid them respect, shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down. Listen to the scripture now, listen. Strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. Now, isn't that an interesting thing? God's your father. He's going to discipline you because he loves you. Just like any father. So respect your father like your heavenly father, like you would your earthly father. Just know everything he's doing, he's doing for your good. But he's disciplining attitudes. This is why it talks about hands that hang down and feeble knees. Okay. So we... We babysit. We're Lolly and Pappy. Karen and I are Lolly and Pappy. We have grandkids. We babysit. So about a month ago or so, uh, Brent and Stephanie, our son and daughter-in-law, they went on a trip, and we babysit for five days. <laughs> One-year-old grandson, five-year-old granddaughter. It was, we love. They're precious, but Lollies and Pappies, four days is really as long as she should go. <laughs> so Kate is our granddaughter. She's precious. Kate's full of energy. She's full of life and full of energy. And so we're babysitting. So I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm in my office. Actually, and there's a, a play area outside my office there. So I'm in my office. I'm kind of on my computer or something. She's out there playing. Just got all kinds of energy. So she gets finished. And, and Karen said, you know, dinner's ready. And so I said, okay, Kate, uh, you know, clean up your toys there. And we'll go down for dinner. And she said, Pappy, I'll, I'll pick them up later. And I said, no, Kate, go ahead and pick them up. And, and I said, pick them up and we'll go down for dinner. <laughs> And this little girl that's bouncing off the walls 30 seconds before, as soon as you tell her something to do, she doesn't want to do <laughs> The hands that hang down and the feeble knees. So I've had practice at that. So... God's dealing with you as his children. This is what the writer, don't be surprised. God's dealing with you as his children. So, you know, discipline is over when the lesson gets learned. And if Kate would have said to me, Kate, go clean up your toys. Pappy, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> I didn't hear that, but I was dreaming about it. <laughs> Pappy, thank you so much. I'm going to go right in there and clean up my toys. And please come and see if I did it right. <laughs> Listen, God says to us, I want you to forgive that person. <laughs> Do you know what they did to me? <laughs> and we, there's little brats. And God said, it's, it's pitiful. You know, when you're watching your grandkids do that, it's just like, you know, they're so cute, but you know. It's part of immaturity, right? That little pity party thing. So God looks at us as his children. Here's what he's saying. I didn't create you to be spectators. I created you to be warriors in my army and to rule and reign with me. And because of that, I'm going to grow you up to act like me. And I want you to be responsible, mature people so that you can live a victorious life. And for that reason, I'm going to deal with that attitude. And all of us who are raising children as parents, and when we discipline them, we're disciplining them for their good so they'll grow up and they can be responsible adults. Because I don't want my kids to go to work for someone and they say, oh, would you go over here and do that? And my kids go, ah. <laughs> I want them to be mature, responsible adults. Say, absolutely, I'll do that and do it with the right attitude. That's what God blesses. Number five, truth about attitudes. Good attitudes... Precede, predict, or precede and predict success, favor and promotion, and bad attitudes precede and predict failure, disfavor, and demotion. You can predict what's going to happen in your life by your attitudes. Now, this is an attitude indicator on an airplane. Watch this right here. This is, that's an attitude indicator, one of the most important instruments in an airplane, and it's for when you can't see outside. When you can see outside, you don't need that. But when you're in instrument conditions and you can't see outside, that red dot in the middle, that white line in the middle is the false horizon. And that red dot is telling you the attitude of the airplane, whether it's nose up, 
level or nose down. Obviously, if it's level, you're cruising. If it's nose up, you're climbing. If it's nose down, you're crashing. So when you can't see outside, when you can't see, when, so when I got my license, a FAA examiner was in the plane with me, and they put foggles on you. They put you under the hood. You can't see outside, but you can see your instruments. The FAA examiner kept, they put it in what's called an unusual attitude. The FAA examiner would take the plane, put it in an unusual attitude, you know, something bank like this, and without looking outside, with looking at that, I had to write the airplane three times. It was easy, because all I had to do is just look at that white line and that dot. Listen to me. There are times in your life where you can't see. Bad circumstances are going on. And it's the worst. See, if you're flying and you can't see outside and you trust your emotions or the way that you feel, you get vertigo and you'll fly the ground, plane straight into the ground thinking you're flying level. That's how John Kennedy Jr. died. He was not instrument rated. He was flying over the ocean at night. He lost his visual reference and he flew straight into the ocean. When they found the wreckage of the plane, he flew that plane directly into the ocean thinking he was level because he had vertigo. Your inner ear will lie to you when you're flying. And even a very good pilot who thinks they're doing well, when they can't see outside, they'll get what's called the leans. And that means you barely dip a wing and you start flying in circles until you spiral into the ground. But you think everything's going good. And it almost is, except you have a wing that's dipped. Let me tell you something. When you're going through difficulty in life, this is your attitude indicator right here. In the book of Psalms alone, David, in the worst times in his life, put his eyes on God, and he told us in the book of Psalms the attitudes that we should have when we're going through difficulty. And when you can't see outside, when you're going through bad times, you can hang on to this right here, and it will predict whether you get out or not. I love to help people to know that you can change your mind, that you can change your thought life, which changes everything. The Bible says as a man thinks within himself, so he is. In other words, our thoughts are the engine that creates our actions, our relationships, everything in our lives. And so when we're, you know, got messed up thoughts like I did when I came into marriage, you know, we need help. And so I hope that that really blessed you. But that is just a small part now of a full seminar that I do called I Changed My Mind. And so right now for your gift of any amount to support us here at Marriage Day, and I hope you will support us here because we have a mission across America, around the world to help people to succeed in marriage and to help you to keep coming back to you, but also go to many other people. For your gift of any amount, we're gonna send you the CD single, I Changed My Mind About My Attitude. Powerful teaching that will really, it will, it will encourage you and really inspire you. For your gift of $55 or more, we'll send you the full five-part CD series, I Changed My Mind, along with my book, When Life Hurts, talking about dealing with baggage from our past and issues of, of pain in our lives. Not just our past, but maybe something you're going through right now. For your gift of $90 or more, we'll send you the full five-part DVD series and the book, When Life Hurts. Listen, this really is life-changing information that will bless you, bless you personally, plus your marriage and family. Here's how you can get it. I changed my mind. Overcome negative thoughts and live a life of freedom and peace through this practical series by Jimmy Evans. For your gift of $55 or more, you'll receive the CD series and Jimmy's book, When Life Hurts. For your gift of $90 or more, you'll receive the DVD series and book. Discover how to always have a positive attitude, how to overcome worry and anxiety, and how to eliminate fear and find fulfillment. We have the ability to expose, to challenge, and to expel any thought that is in our minds right now that doesn't belong there. For your gift of any amount to support the mission and ministry of marriage today, we'll send you the CD single, I Changed My Mind About My Attitude. Happiness is a choice within your control. You can change your mind and experience breakthrough in every area of your life. Experience this powerful series by Jimmy Evans today. We were made to love. This is who we are. The ones we love, we call family. A bond designed to last a lifetime. Embrace what your family has been set apart to be. Family is forever. We all desire to leave this world better than we found it. To leave a legacy for our children and grandchildren. The journey will not always be easy. There will be struggle, but beyond that struggle, 
the future is waiting. Your family can have a great future. Join us for EXO Marriage Conference 2017. Well, this program today is on changing our mind about our attitude and that mm-hmm. teaching. I hope you enjoyed that teaching, but I tell you, I love that teaching. Mm-hmm. I love bringing that teaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you talk about different people and the way we choose our attitude. And I'm a pilot, mm-hmm. you know, I fly my own plane. And the attitude in an airplane is this. Mm-hmm. It's the pitch of the plane. There's literally on our control panel on an airplane, there's an attitude indicator. And the attitude indicator tells you if you're going up mm-hmm. or if you're going down. Well, that's exactly the way it is in life. By the way, it's called nose up or nose Mm -hmm. down. And when you have a nose up attitude, it means you're climbing. You're going to do good. When you have a nose down attitude, if you keep that long enough, you're going to crash. Mm -hmm. And so we choose our attitude. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can can smell someone's attitude a block away. And I've had times in my life that I had a bad attitude, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and I had to change that. But you can wake up in the morning and have a good attitude, mm-hmm. you know, being thankful. You're, you're always big on being thankful. Being thankful and just setting my mind on God, it makes all the difference in the world. Having a bad attitude mm-hmm. like this, it just means your attitude about your marriage, your children, your job, whatever it is. A nose-down attitude means you're going to crash, mm-hmm. you know, and the people around you are well, And I think that in um, some people's lives, you know, they weren't raised, you know, in a family that there was a lot of praise or you know, good attitudes. And so they come out of a situation where there's just a lot of verbal abuse or just, you know, nitpicking and um, maybe some violence. I don't know. But, you know, no matter what you've come out of, you can make a choice to not only let God heal you, but to to, um, ask the Lord to give you a different attitude. Ask the Holy Spirit to come and to fill you with what He gives us, you know, because He's the one that gives us the best attitudes, you know, and as you grow in that, and, you know, you're not going to, it's not going to be instant. I mean, I'm here to tell you, it took years for the Lord to get, get this out of me of the things of my past where I could express what I really felt uh, on the inside. Because inside of all of us, there's a seed of God that wants to express joy and happiness and love and peace, but it's been blocked. You know, there's things in our life in the past that has blocked that. And so, you know, just, you, you'll pray about it. Ask the Lord for healing and then start studying. You know, what does the Bible say? I mean, Psalms is where I learned to praise the Lord. You know, I got into the Psalms and I stayed in there and I could identify so much with David because he loved God, yet he went through all these sufferings and he felt so low, but yet he would encourage himself and he would praise God and he would find the best in the situation and he would say, no matter what happens, my God is with me and we can do this and we can get through this. And so, you know, you'll get in the Psalms, you know, get around people and get around people that are positive. You know, if you're around a bunch of friends that are, you know, cutting down the other or cutting down their spouses that's the worst thing you can do yeah. you know so put yourself in a, a positive atmosphere get teaching tapes get teaching tapes about you know having a positive attitude or, or, or your mind and changing your mind so find those because the help's there and it really is it's not as hard as you think and if it's been a long time since you had a positive attitude start this very second and say praise god or i love my husband or i love my children and isn't the sky beautiful yeah. i mean simple things you'd be surprised that starts you know, it starts that thing inside of you that just cries out for a positive attitude. Well, absolutely, Karen. And you know, the Bible says, "Put on a put on a garment of praise mm-hmm. for the spirit exactly. of heaviness." And and the point is, it says you have to put it on. The reason you have to put it on is it's not natural. Mm-hmm. We're not born with a spirit of praise. Mm-hmm. We're born complaining. Mm-hmm. You know, we're it's born true. to the first <laughs> word that every child knows is no. <laughs> and we've got a two-year-old grandson, and that's his that's his favorite word. But no. No, and, and you have that attitude. But notice it says, put on a garment of praise for the spirit mm-hmm. of heaviness. A negative attitude literally makes us discouraged and depressed. I believe that. It mm-hmm. invites depression. Mm-hmm. It invites negativity. And it, it's a dangerous thing. It affects our marriage. It affects our family. First of all, who wants to be around a negative person? Mm-hmm. Okay. Second thing is who wants to hire or promote a negative mm-hmm. person? You know, I, I don't want negative people around me. I want positive people around me. So you can change your mind about your attitude. It makes all the difference in the world. We hope that this program today has been a, been a blessing to you. I want you to watch this. Marriage is under attack, as we all know. 
but marriage today goes daily into over 110 million homes in America and over 200 countries worldwide. And that's just our television program. We have books, DVDs, CDs, we have seminars, we have simulcast, we have all different types of ministries that go out to reach families in need, to, to educate people about marriage, but also to heal hurting marriages and to keep little children together with their parents. It's one of the biggest things that we do here at Marriage Today is trying to keep families together, to help them solve their problems, to help them to have the marriage of their dreams and also that a family can have a destiny, that they can have a legacy of love and a legacy of lasting marriage. That's what we do here. And every time you give to Marriage Today, that's what you're giving toward. We've had tens of thousands of marriages that we know of over the years that have been healed, divorces that have been canceled, couples that stay together, couples that are able to get married with the knowledge of how to be married and how to stay married because of you, because of your giving. And right now I'm asking you to give your most generous gift. If you're, you can become a monthly partner, but also you can just give a gift, just a one-time gift. You can use your bank card. You can send your gift to the address that's there on your screen right now. You can go online to our secure website. The address is on your screen right now and you can give that way. I'm just asking you if you would stand with us as we reach out in this critical ministry to marriages and families at this critical time in history. Would you stand with us financially? Would you partner with us to help us to heal hurting marriages and to keep families together and to keep little children together with their parents? God bless you. Going through divorce is a lot to ask of children and often results in years of emotional pain. It's a violent ripping apart of their parents and a sense of abandonment. What sometimes we see as a quick way out can mean complete loss for a child. You have a 100% chance of success in marriage. You, you were made for marriage. Marriage Today exists to protect children from the pain of divorce and to steer couples away from marital failure by telling them the truth. When you stand with Marriage Today, your individual effort multiplies with other like-minded partners, and together we can rebuild a legacy of strong families around the world. Choose your level of partnership today and receive immediate access to the video streaming library. Become a rock-solid partner today. Thank you for joining us today. Support Marriage Today with your best gift and receive the series, I Changed My Mind. Join Jimmy and Karen Evans on February 10th and 11th for the XO 2017 Marriage Conference, live at Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas, or via simulcast at one of hundreds of churches worldwide. Seating is limited, so register today. Visit exomarriageconference.com. Become a rock-solid partner today and connect with the mission of Marriage Today. Together, we can help couples succeed in marriage. This program is made possible by the generous support of our faithful partners.